What's up everybody, I am Daniel, this is DTV. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about PCSing with a pet and more specifically uh, using an international shipper to ship your pet from the United States overseas. Um, I've got a lot of, a lot of information um, already on my website um, and on YouTube about PCSing with pets, but I do like to feature um, spouses every once in a while that have actually gone through this experience. I've actually never PCS with a pet before. I've just taken a lot of different information from different sources and put it all together for you. So I thought it might be helpful to get um, the perspective of a spouse who has actually PCS with a pet using an international shipper. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey, I'm a military spouse living here in Vilsack, Germany, and we just moved here from Florida. So when we got our spots on the rotator, um, this was pre-COVID, um, we had no pet spots and we did not want to worry about trying to make that happen. They apparently go very quickly. From what a lot of people say is if you call daily, hey, me, some yeah. might open up because there's a lot of cancellations, movement, whatever. I didn't want to risk it, so. I just wanted to make sure they got over safely and it definitely happened. So yeah, yeah. we went the shipping route because we were supposed to come, I think April of 2020. Okay. So then because of COVID that got delayed, we still came over Well, my husband came over on the rotator. I joined him a month later with the dogs. As soon as we knew that we couldn't get on the rotator with them um, and flying commercial was not an option for my husband, we knew we were gonna do pet shipper because I just didn't want to deal with trying to get both dogs over here flying by myself. Um, so we in instantly went to pet shipping companies. The first thing I did was joined the Facebook groups. So it was, I think, Perfect PCS of Germany and Military PCS with Pets. I just kind of researched anybody that used a pet shipper from there, got a few names, went onto the websites and just kind of looked at reviews, which there's a lot out there if you just look. And then all of them have where you can get quotes. So they just need like basic information about where you're coming from, where you're going, how many pets, breeds, that type of stuff, just basic info. Um, and then they will get back to you through email with quotes. And I kind of narrowed it down too, because they'll tell you right on there. A lot of them will say military PCS, military discounts, all those different things, which tells me that they work with military often. Um, so that's how I chose. Um, I got, I think, three or four quotes, and then I just chose the best quote for us, and it had the best reviews that I saw. Um, there was actually somebody that had just posted about their experience using who I ended up using coming to Vilsec themselves, so I knew that it could happen and it was a good experience for them, so. And um, who did you end up with? With Feathers and Fur Express. <laughs> Highly recommend them. Um, so after that, once I got the quotes, I went with Feathers and Fur. They were just the best. They were really good at communicating with me. Um, so from there with the quotes, they quoted me just generically, uh, basically airport to airport. But I knew that I could get them to the airport but since my husband was already over here, I wanted them delivered to our door. So we ended up doing airport to door delivery. Um, so that did add to the cost. They had every option you can imagine. Um, so they have door to door. Well, they'll come pick you up, pick them up from the house, do everything and then deliver them to your, the door. Um, they have airport to airport where you drop them off the airport, pick them up at the airport. Um, and then they also have what we ended up doing where it's drop off at the airport delivery in Vilsack is what we ended up choosing. Okay, so where we were in Florida, they basically just told us the closest airport to us that would work, which ended up being Miami. So it was, I think we, I had to drive them three hours. There was closer airports, but on just the day I needed them to fly, that's just when they had to, because they were actually flying Lufthansa cargo. And then landing, the only option we were given was Frankfurt. I don't know if there's others out there, but that's just what we were given was Frankfurt and that's why we chose the door delivery. So they actually basically hired someone out that picked the dogs up, cleared them through customs, loaded them up in their crates in like a van and drove on to Rose Barracks and dropped them off at our door. So up front, it is definitely not cheap. It is a very expensive option. Um, it's just was worth it for us. The pet shipper takes care of literally everything. Um, we didn't have to worry about anything. We just emailed them everything they needed. They set it all up. Um, so additionally, once I signed the contract and did choose them, I just had to put a deposit down. And then from there, they sent us like detail of how to measure your pets, 
So we measured them, sent them the measurements, and then they came back with the recommended crate size. Um, so from there, I just kind of, and they, they recommended the type of crate. They tell you how the crate has to be, um, but brand, you can kind of get whatever brand you wanted. Um, we just went with one of the top brands that we found, which was, I think, Petmate, the Sky Kennel, which a lot of people do use. Um, the only thing that we had to buy was to make sure it was metal bolts because they came with plastic. Um, but then we, once we got those crates in, we had to take pictures of the dogs inside the crates. They wanted them, pictures of them laying down and standing and sitting to confirm through fake pictures since they weren't local. They were, I think, a different state than us. So everything was email that the crate I did buy was correct. Um, so obviously it's, some are pickier than others from what I've heard, um, but there's just a like general outline of how a dog should fit in a crate, whether they're flying with you, checked baggage, cargo, however they're going, um, which I think is like three inches of space around. I, I think they just have to be able to move pretty comfortably. Um, I know like when they were like sitting or standing, their ears couldn't touch the top, that type of stuff. So, cause with the crate, there are things that need to be on the crate that I had to do. But then there was things that were specific to the pet shipper doing. They kind of, actually the shipper kind of recommended the best thing for in a crate, which was they actually said to cut out like cardboard, like from a box and line the bottom with that. Cause that actually, if there's an accident will help soak it up better because I guess a lot use the like pads, but sometimes they'll tear up the pads, I don't know. So I specifically like wrapped in a towel around the cardboard and put that on the bottom. So if there was any accidents or anything, cause they're in the crate for a long time. And then I, then I put like comfy blankets and stuff in there. Oh, and I had to zip tie like the food and water dish. You have to have a food and water dish in the door. So what I ended up doing, which was the best because then I could just throw it away after was I went to the dollar store and bought Tupperware, like little square ones. And then I drilled holes and then zip tied those to it because they'll tape food to the top of the crate. Well, like I bring it and then it gets tied, like, like whatever, taped to the top. And then they also recommended to the night before freeze the water in the water dish so that it slowly melts and then they have water throughout. But then from there, there is like a bunch of paperwork and stickers and everything that also go on the crate, but the pet shipper took care of all that also. So they dealt directly with booking anything for them. I didn't deal with anything with tickets, nothing. Everything went through the pet shipper. Um, they actually went through the company, so they went solely through Lufthansa themselves. So I didn't know any of that information. They just kind of did it all for me. Um, the only other thing from there was getting the health certificates in the vet situation. So where we were in Florida, I did not have the option of going to a military vet, which I've been told is the option if you need to. Like if you're active duty, that's what you should do because the USDA stamp, the military vet can do. So I actually ended up having to go to a civilian vet, which was something new. So the pet shipper helped me even through that, told me everything I would need for that. So that actually added a cost into the contract as well because if you go through military vet, you don't have to do the USDA cost and everything. Going through civilian vet, it had to add the overnight paperwork to the USDA, the USDA overnighting it back, and the pet shipper dealing with that. So I think it added like $150 just to do all that. So it's the whole health certificate packet. Um, truthfully, I don't even know what's really in it. <laughs> because again, the pet shipper did it. So I ended up having to find a civilian vet. Um, one thing I did not know, but was told by the shipper was it had to be a USDA accredited vet and not every vet is that. So I just called locally around, found a USDA accredited vet and they actually ended up being super familiar with health certificates. So it worked out perfect. So from there, I actually made an appointment with them and then sent their info straight to my pet shipper and then my pet, pet shipper contacted the vet directly. So from there, I again was like kind of off to the side. So then I just had to show up on the day of their appointments. Um, so they sent, the pet shipper sent everything to the vet with detailed instructions of how to finish filling out the health certificate. And there's parts that can be pre-filled out. And again, the pet shipper took care of all that. So there was no commute, like confusion because I would not know how to fill that out at all. I don't even really know what it looks like to this day. So 
And then the vet just kind of did a little physical, looked them over, scanned the chips to confirm that the chips were the right ones, finished filling out the USDA stuff, and then they don't stamp it, so the USDA stamps it. So since I had prepaid for shipping, um, like the overnight shipping and everything, um, the vet actually stuffed all that, did that all for me and sent it directly to the USDA. And then the next day I received it back from the USDA with the stamp. So since mo both my dogs had theirs since they were puppies, all I did was before I even took them to the vet, I actually looked up the companies that they go through and they just have to be a 15 digit ISO compliant is what they call it, so it's an international chip. Once I went on both of their like respective sites, I saw that one of the first things it said is that all of their chips are the 15 digit ISO compliant. I even like counted the numbers to make sure that, cause you can see their chip numbers if you log in. So from there, and then I actually had send that to the pet shipper originally before even the vet stuff and everything was confirmed that it was okay. So I didn't have to worry about that. And then, cause I know there's something with the rabies too, but they nine months prior had a three year rabies shot. So it was good for three years. So I didn't have to worry about the rabies shot either. That's another thing too, is that did, did add a cost. So I had to pay out of pocket for the vet visit. I think total for the vet I ended up going to just for those visits and to fill out the health certificate was around $250. So that's another cost that you do have to be aware of before you go in. I'm not sure how much the military vet costs, but that's already a few hundred more just going to a civilian vet and having to send off to the USDA and everything. Um, so I will recommend if you can get onto a military vet, go to a military vet, but it is possible and easy through a civilian vet if you just find the right person, so. Um, so originally, I was actually, so my husband was already over here about a month, month and a half before me. So originally I was going to send the dogs like a couple weeks before, um, but was told that I have to actually fly within five days of them. So I actually had to send my itinerary to the pet shipper that shows. So they left the day before me. So they left on like the 23rd and I left on the 24th, but I had to show that I was flying within five days of them to be able to use that 10 day health certificate. I was told otherwise, there's some special stuff you have to do. It's a few more steps and it's a health certificate that I think is only good for 48 hours. So it's a little harder to get. Um, so I changed that and chose to fly. So they did get here a day before me, but since my husband was here, he was able to deal with that. And then from there, the day of flying um, was just told a time to meet. I had to meet them at the cargo area, not the main airport, which the shipper will tell you where that's all at. Um, and then I met the pet shipper down there, uh, which I think was contracted out to somebody else. Um, Cause the feathers and fur I think is located out of Atlanta, Georgia. So it was somebody that was local to Florida. Super, super familiar with it and knowledgeable. As soon as I got there and met them, I stayed outside with my dogs. He went inside and took care of everything. And then literally just came down and told me where to drive and back up for them. And then from there, the pet shipper had everything else. So he had all the stickers because there's a bunch of stickers that need to go on it. There's certain paperwork that has to be taped to the top, everything. They took care of all that. They even had a information sheet printed out because they had me send pictures of my dogs. So the pet shipper printed it out. So it was like a big picture of them. So it was what they look like and then all their info. And that was even taped to the top of the crate. So it was great. They took care of everything. And then from there, they were loaded up. They kind of took them out and they were literally forklifted over onto a pallet. Um, and then that was it and we left them. But they were told that they would be in, moved over and monitored in like an air controlled area. They will not come out of the crates at all though. So they are in their crates for a very long time because the crates are actually zip tied closed so that nobody can get in and out of them, um, which I kind of felt safer to know that like nobody could just open and let the crate the dogs out. And then after that, the pet shipper actually sent me some information. So since they were flying cargo, they're basically giving some kind of like a tracking number basically, um, where I could actually go on Lufthansa cargo, put in that tracking number and it showed me, it wasn't specific names, but it showed me this number was loaded onto the plane. It told me the time the plane left, Miami, where it was in the air, expected in Frankfurt, when it landed in Frankfurt. So I tracked it myself, but my pet shipper also reached out to me throughout and made sure that I also was given that information. 
That way I knew where they were at all times. Um, and then I, once they landed, so usually a lot of people pick their own dogs up. So you go through customs, that's clear it. I think that costs like a hundred or so dollars too. Honestly, I'm not really sure. Again, that was in our cost with our shipper um, because we had them clearing customs for us. So somebody got them and then actually that person got a hold of my husband and let the him know, your dogs are here. I'm about to go get them from customs. So they were even in constant communication once the dogs landed. So the pet shipper from there cleared customs, loaded them onto the van, and then drove the three to four hours here to Vilsuk. So it was pretty perfect. And then their crates, I mean, the crates are huge. They don't, they barely fit in my SUV. So he went with the van, he just, had to go, I think if you're on post, they were still able to come on post, he just had to sign them in and then he just followed them to the door. So definitely if you, I highly recommend the pet shipping route. We're already planning and saving for when we leave Germany, we're gonna use another pet shipper. I'm not even gonna try to deal, even if we fly the rotator, I'm not even gonna try to deal with pet spots. We just had such a great experience with it, I'm gonna do it again, um, but it is not an inexpensive cost. It is very expensive. So originally when we were quoted, all of them ranged around the $3,000 mark, give or take a couple hundred. And that's just the main shipping part. For one dog? For both. For both dogs. Which is not bad for both. Some places are a little bit more depending, but for us to come to Germany during that time, that's what we were quoted. Okay. So Once we added the, um, service to have them delivered it did jump it up and then we also had to add in factor in the usda stuff and so once all that was factored in our final cost was around four thousand dollars to ship both the dogs over that's not that bad actually though, for, no. two, for both dogs it's not bad but for a lot of people to get them i mean if they fly with you and they're checked baggage i think it only costs three to four hundred so in comparison cost it's gonna be a lot more money it was just totally worth it for us. So that's the route we ended up taking. I just recommend it. It's just made it so easy. I didn't have to worry about a health certificate being filled out wrong, nothing making it on time, anything with the flights being messed up because it was just professionals that handled it the entire time. Yeah. Okay. So the main thing, this is probably just across the board for anybody that uses any type of way to get their dog over um, is crate training them. Our dogs are crate trained in like a normal crate, like the wire open ones. So I thought it was gonna be super easy with the airline ones, but they wanted nothing to do with that. So what we ended up having to do is I just left the top off because they come in two pieces and just put their beds in the bottom half and let them get used to that for a little while. And then probably about a week or so before the actual flight, I put the top on, bolted it, and then actually had it set up exactly like it would be if they were f what they were flying um, so the blanket they were going to use everything so that they were used to the smells um, and anytime I like left the house to run errands or do anything I just locked them in there um, so by the time of the flight and then it actually worked out because even driving the three hours to the airport to be able to fit both the crates and them I had to have them in the crates in my SUV and they did great the entire three hour drive. So I knew they were gonna be golden at that point. So then another thing with the shipper too, is it just left it open where I could ask them questions at any time. I felt like my shipper might've been getting annoyed with me at one point because it was just like five questions a day, but I just wanted to make sure, but they were so friendly and on it. I had a response immediately every single time. I just, 100% recommend pet shipping. It was just the best process. I was even nervous because I just couldn't imagine like not knowing and like dropping them off. Like I was so nervous about everything, all parts of it, but the shipper just made it where it was put my mind at ease and they made it safely and they were happy, so. Well, I hope that was helpful information for you. If you're considering using a pet shipper, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop dab 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 Okay, 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 okay. How do people do this? How did you make that look so easy? Okay, try that again. Well, I hope that was um, helpful information for you. Um,
What do I want to say? I don't even know what I want to say. Why are you making noises? I feel like this is going to be me the whole time, though. Like, I feel like I was, like, talking with my hands the whole time. In the description um, so that you can... Yeah. I'm a military spouse. I just moved to Germany from Florida. And I don't know what else to say. I, need, I feel like that was very stiff. I was like, I, I, I am a military spouse. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me think about this. All right, let's let's go. I guess what I'm trying to say is subscribe or something. But... Door to door, sir. Or the... Let me try that again. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't matter. I guess I'll just see whatever comes out of my mouth. We'll see. Look at the camera. Um, yeah, the camera. Uh, <laughs> subscribe below. I don't want to be like that. Hit that button. I don't want to like smash that like button. You know? <laughs> I'm not, anyways, maybe I'll use that as blooper and I'll put that in then and that'll be my like, subscribe, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and I'm gonna check one quick thing because I'm just a little nervous that this is not recording. What? If it's not, I'll be pissed. We're good. Okay, I might have cried a little bit no, if I, I wasn't. I would have cried. <laughs>